The Bow River is a river in the Canadian province of Alberta. It begins in the Rocky Mountains and winds through the Alberta foothills onto the prairies where it meets the Old Min River, the two then forming the South Saskatchewan River. These waters ultimately flow through the Nelson River into Hudson Bay. The Bow River runs through the city of Calgary, taking in the Elba River at the historic site of Fort Calgary near downtown. The Bow River Pathway, developed along the river's banks, is considered a part of Calgary's self-image. First Nations peoples made varied use of the river for sustenance before settlers of European origin arrived, such as using its valleys in the buffalo hunt. The name Bow refers to the reeds that grew along its banks and were used by the local First Nations peoples to make bows. The Piagan name for the river is Mokhabn, meaning river where bow reeds grow. The river is an important source of water for irrigation and drinking water. Between the years 1910 and 1960, the Bow River and its tributaries were engineered to provide hydroelectric power, primarily for Calgary's use. This significantly altered the river's flow in certain ecosystems. Course The river's source is from the Bow Glacier, which is part of the Wapta Icefield. The outflow from this source flows into Bow Lake in the Canadian Rockies. It flows south to the village of Lake Louise then turns east and flows through the town of Banff then through Canmar. The Ghost Lake Reservoir is formed upstream from the town of Cochrane. The Bow then flows eastward to the city of Calgary, it continues on to form the South Saskatchewan River when the Bow joins with the Old Men River near Grassy Lake in southern Alberta. Its waters are further shed in the Hudson Bay through the Saskatchewan River, Lake Winnipeg, and Nelson River. Communities along the Bow include Lake Louise, Banff, Canmore, Cochrane, Calgary, and Arrowwood. The Bow Falls are on the river's course, near Banff. The Bow River has a total length of 587 kilometers, 365 miles, and a drainage area of 26,200 square kilometers, 10,100 square miles. History First Nations The fur trader James Gaddy and the Hudson's Bay Company explorer David Thompson are traditionally considered to be the first people of European origin to discover the Bow River. They camped along the Bow with a group of Pecani during the 1787-88 winter. Before they arrived, First Nations populations had lived in the Bow region for thousands of years. Among them were the Nakoda, Tsatina, and the Blackfoot Confederacy, consisting of the Kanai, Peganai, and Siksika peoples. The Kootenai had migrated westwards, possibly in the early 18th century, but still occasionally ventured into the Bow region to hunt bison. First Nations used the river's valleys for the buffalo hunt, in which herds of buffalo were driven over cliffs or into valleys where they could be killed more easily with bows and arrows. Of all the First Nations groups that lived in the Bow River area, only the Nakoda fished the river regularly. While other groups likely caught fish during harder times, they primarily hunted buffalo during the summer season when fishing would have been most plentiful. The river's water naturally attracted game, which supplemented the area's use for First Nations diets. The river's game, its local sources for firewood, and its valleys shelter made the river a common camp location for First Nations during the prairie winters. The danger of crossing the river mended was a natural boundary for First Nations. Thus, the two main fords of the Lower Bow River. Blackfoot Crossing and a ford near the Bow's convergence with the Elba River, central Calgary today, became important gathering points for southern Alberta's First Nations to exchange goods and celebrate festivities. Blackfoot Crossing was used by the Siksika as a winter campsite and is today a part of their reserve. 
fur traders began to move to the Bow River region following Thompson's expedition, but the river was not used extensively in the fur trade. First Nations already weakened by declining buffalo numbers and disease were further devastated with the introduction of the whiskey trade when Fort Whoopup was established in 1869. Whiskey traders were active along the Bow River during the 1870s. As a means to stop these operations, the recently formed Northwest Mounted Police, later the RCMP, established Fort Calgary in 1875 at the confluence of the Alba River and the Bow. In order to proceed with railway construction through present-day Alberta and a northerly settlement of the Bow region, treaties with First Nations were needed to extinguish their title to specific lands. With bison numbers declining and white settlers becoming increasingly common in the region, the Nakoda, Satina, Kanai, Peganai, and Siksika met with representatives of the Canadian government at Blackfoot Crossing on the Bow River and signed Treaty 7 on September 22, 1877. From the perspective of the Canadian government, these groups had now surrendered all their land privileges outside of their reserves. The reserves of the Nakoda, Satina, and Siksika were established along the Bow River. Hydroelectric Development, 1910-1960 Calgary was growing rapidly after 1900. Pressure emerged for the city to receive cheaper power from hydroelectric sources. William Maxwell Aitken, later with R.B. Bennett, formed Calgary Power Company in 1910. That year, on property purchased from the Nakoda, Calgary Power began constructing Alberta's first significant hydroelectric plant, Horseshoe Dam. There were problems for Calgary Power before this dam had even been completed in 1911. The Bow River originates from a northern mountain, and its flow varies considerably depending upon the amount and location of winter snowfalls. A comprehensive study of the Bow's flow measurements had not been conducted. In its operations, Calgary Power relied upon estimates of the river's minimum flow during winter conditions. Thus, despite the amount of energy the company had contracted, it could not reliably fulfill these obligations during winters. With capital already invested in horseshoe, Calgary Power opened another hydroelectric plant and reservoir two years later on the Bow's tributary. Kananaskis River. A reservoir was also created within Banff National Park in 1912 at Lake Minanka. Despite this additional reservoir and both plants, Calgary Power still struggled to fulfill its power contracts during winter months. The company began planning new projects to control the Bow River in the 1920s. The Bow River's hydroelectric development both conforms and contrasts with elements of conservationist ideology in the United States during this era. This ideology espoused that rational and planned resource development guided by technicians should benefit the greatest number of people possible. In this light, rivers could be seen as a series of interdependent parts and engineering all of them could give technicians control over the system as a whole for the benefit of society. Admitting their failure to plan effectively, Calgary Power stated in the in this process, Calgary Power ultimately fulfilled conservationist ideology as it increasingly brought the Bow River's interdependent sectors, and thus it as a whole, under control while failing to embody conservationist ideals of rationally developing the bow initially. Also in line with conservationism, bureaucrats allowing the construction of the Minanka Reservoir espoused that the nation's development as a whole superseded the need to protect a small part of Banff National Park's nature. Calgary Power's impromptu hydroelectric development of the bow continued. Ghost Dam was built in 1929, a major development on the Bow's tributary, Spray River, 
was completed in 1951 and, at the behest of the provincial government, Bearspaw Dam was built in 1954 and just west of Calgary to control flooding, the dam included a generating station, World War II's industrial demand proved again that the country's needs were paramount, another hydroelectric development was built within Banff National Park, this time on Cascade River, a tributary of the Bow. Between 1910 and 1960 the Bow River changed radically as it was systematically engineered to control its water flow and provide hydroelectric power. Summer flooding in Calgary was an issue of the past. Water was held by reservoirs during spring and summer, permitting steady power generation during fall and winter. Comparing 1924 to 33 to 1954 to 63, the Bow River's January flow had approximately doubled 30 years later. Parts of the river, such as that preceding Ghost Dam, had practically turned into lakes. These developments had ecological effects, too. For example, reservoirs allowed certain fish species, such as the brown trout, to outcompete others while other species virtually disappeared. Environmentalism The Bow River's south bank in Calgary was a generally derelict commercial zone by the 1950s. The Calgary Local Council of Women was the most vocal advocate for turning this area into a park system as a part of a broader campaign for improved public and social services. Calgary City Council agreed to the idea in 1955, but by 1959 little progress had been made to fund the project. To accommodate increasing traffic flow through the growing city, the Canadian Pacific Railway and the city began negotiating a CPR reroute that would follow the south bank of the Bow River, turning it into a parkway and the CPR's rail main line. Among the plan's critics was the local Council of Women, reminding the city of its 1955 promise for a river park. After negotiations between the CPR and Calgary ended in failure in 1964, urban elites, such as golf clubs, increasingly endorsed the local Council of Women's idea for a park system. Park advocates defined the Bow River within Calgary as the city's nature, it was something to be protected for and enjoyed by the public. However, as progress was made in the park's creation, this environmental view of the Bow's nature proved selective. For example, trees were not to be cut down, but landscaping to accommodate cyclists was endorsed. In short, the river was valued above all when it suited human goals. Calgary eventually developed an extensive plan for the Bow River's park system and it is considered an important element of Calgary's self-image today. The grassroots advocacy done by the local Council of Women denotes emerging environmental sensibilities that are representative of larger trends occurring in North America during this time frame which Samuel Hayes associated with the emergence of an advanced consumer society. Unlike the pre-World War II elitist ideology of conservationist production, this emergent approach in North America was of grassroots consumers democratically engaging in environmental issues, and there was often tension between the public and managers of the environment. These attitudes which valued the bow's nature insofar as it suited human goals, were again exemplified in the events unfolding after an Alberta environment official discovered a toxic blob in the bow in October 1989. Originating from an abandoned wood-preserving plant on the Bow River's bank, the blob in the river had released a carcinogenic plume that stretched over 250 kilometers, 160 miles downstream. Its discovery caused alarm in the media and amongst those living along the Bow River. Two years earlier, 70% of Calgarians reported using the Bow recreationally. As a result, Alberta's Premier, Ralph Klein, 
established the Bow River Water Quality Council as a provincial advisory body. The council was to promote awareness of the river's water quality and try to improve it through fact-finding and aiding interinstitutional coordination. It was composed of representatives from diverse interests such as First Nations, agriculture, and municipalities. Recreational groups represented on the council, such as Doug's Unlimited and Bow Waters Canoe Club, articulated concern for the river's environment. Their attitudes were not strictly human-centric, but, like those favoring a park system in Calgary, they defined the Bow River's environment as something worth preserving for human use. However, greater changes in attitude toward the river were manifest in the Bow River Water Quality Council's reports over time. By 1994, they were emphasizing the importance of the bow's ecological balance as a whole for maintaining its water quality and quantity. 3. 368 In the mid-1990s, the Upper Bow River began being treated explicitly biocentrically. This was part of the larger pursuit of treating Banff National Park's ecosystems as something intrinsically valuable. Maintaining these ecosystems was now prioritized over any human enjoyment of the parks. 2013 Floods In June 2013, southern Alberta experienced heavy rainfall that triggered catastrophic flooding throughout much of the southern half of the province along the Bow, Elbow, Highwood and Oldman rivers and tributaries. A dozen municipalities declared local states of emergency on June 20 as water levels rose and numerous communities were placed under evacuation orders. Banff Designation as a National Park In 1887 the Canadian Parliament, under the urging of the Canadian Pacific Railway Vice President, William Van Horn, and the Federal Land Agent, William Pierce created Rocky Mountain Park, later to become known as Banff National Park. Originally only 647 square kilometers, 250 square miles, the park was Canada's first national park and included the Bow River. Eventually the park grew to include the Bow Glacier, an outflow of the Wapda Icefield and the supplier of the water for the Bow River. The designation of Banff as a national park marked a turning point in the public's perception of the Bow River. The river was now viewed as something that not only had had an industrial and agricultural quality but an aesthetic value as well. The Canadian Pacific Railway, the company who led the development of Banff, recognized this particularly well. When work began on a new luxury hotel in Banff in 1886-87, Van Horn personally redesigned and reoriented the plan so that the guests of the hotel would also be able to see the vista of the Bow River. Furthermore, in many early postcards from Banff, as well as still some current ones, the Bow River featured prominently.